At the beginning of this year, I gave my thoughts on AMD's CES presentation, saying that, yes, the 3990X is impressive. Yes, Renoir is way more impressive than I think most people expected, but this... All of this was just the beginning, that 2020 would appear to be an impressive year for AMD, but that it was really the beginning of them establishing themselves as a market leader. However, I also emphasize that while they might establish themselves as a market leader, Intel and other competitors have some impressive things on the horizon. And so they would have to have a couple of pocket aces nobody is seeing coming to really establish themselves. And... If you're an investor in AMD, I actually think today's analyst conference was what you were hoping for, that it did give you the sense that AMD was here to stay in the top end of all markets. But I got to admit, a lot of gamers, and to a certain extent that includes me, were disappointed by the lack of some announcements we wanted to see. However, there's a greater picture here that some may be missing and in terms of long-term benefits to the gaming industry, it really could not be a better outlook. So let's get into it. First, I want to start with what I thought was good about this press conference. And that's that, once again, AMD said two things. Which, really, I could summarize most AMD press conferences in the past two years like this. Um, yes, what we said is coming is coming. And yes, we're going to keep making new things, even though you guys seem to keep thinking we're too optimistic. You know, AMD came out and they said, yeah, Zen 3 is coming. Yeah, we have a new generation of Infinity Fabric. Yeah, Zen 4 is coming after Zen 3. And not three years later, but in under two years after Zen 3. And it will be on 5 nanometer like we said it was. It's always funny to see people doubt that AMD is actually going to keep executing in the way they have been, but they are going to. And that's because this is the company they rebuilt from the ashes to compete with a dominant Intel. People keep forgetting this. AMD thought Intel would have eight cores or more on 10 nanometer desktop, well, by 2018. That's what they thought they would be competing with. AMD built Zen 2 to be competing with eight to 10, 10 nanometer isolate cores. But they're not. They're just still fighting this old crap Intel's shilling out because, well, they didn't invest properly in scaling 10 nanometer quickly. Now, this, this brings us to the part that might disappoint some people. Although, I don't know that it should, right? We never knew for sure when RDNA 2 was coming out, except that it was coming in the next generation consoles, which I will reiterate that again. They said consoles not console singular, the RT stuff they're working on will be in both the Xbox and the PlayStation. But they only have so much capacity. And with all of these things going on right now in the world, all of the turbulence, I mean, I know for a fact that Sony's been talking about how they're worried about supply of several components. And you know they called up AMD and said, hey, we know things are a bit worrisome, but we want to launch this year. And if you give us the proper allotment, we will sell this many units. Don't worry about that. You don't need to worry about your own marketing. You don't need to worry about your drivers falling flat. If you put RDNA chips in our PlayStation, it's going to sell 5 million units if you give us 5 million units this year. And really the same goes for Xbox. Short term, AMD knows if they put a chip in a console, it's kind of more likely to sell than if they put it in their desktop chips. And if the consoles come out first, the games will be more likely to be optimized for RDNA 2.0. So for those that say they want a AMD graphics card to compete with the 2080 Ti this year, well, I do have news for you. AMD confirmed that they're looking to bring the same level of efficiency improvement with RDNA 2.0 over 1.0 as they brought with RDNA 1.0 over GCN. And this won't just strictly be a reduction in energy usage. It will have higher IPC and faster clocks. So if we look at the 5700 XT with 9.7 teraflops and we compare that to the roughly 13 teraflops of the 2080 Ti, we can then say, okay, it will have a higher IPC, which was about on level with Turing per core. The Xbox has 12 teraflops, guys. 
the Xbox is the 2080 Ti competitor. And we basically knew that when we saw early this year, it had a 400 millimeter squared die and that the console would not use that much energy. That's your competitor for sure, the Xbox and the new PlayStation. But notice they did say it's coming out this year, and I've done a video on about the size of that massive graphics card. It's called RDNA 2X for a reason. Expect at least double the performance of the previous generation. And that's when we get into the big thing people are forgetting. Everyone seems to think that if AMD brings out Big Navi at the end of the year, it doesn't matter because it's like, who cares if you beat the 2080 Ti when Ampere's already out? Which, honestly, I don't really agree with that sentiment for two reasons. Number one, the 5700 XT, RDNA 1.0, that's what fought Turing. I know they didn't launch something stronger, but they only went up to 225 watts. AMD's never been afraid to go to 300 watts with the 290X, with Vega, whatever, when they need to, to take the performance crown. The fact is, AMD just chose not to. They chose to launch a small die, 250 millimeter squared, a third the die size of the 2080 Ti, even on a new node, right? Even if you die shrunk the 2080 Ti, it would still be a lot bigger than the 5700 XT. AMD just said, we're competing with the lower high end, and that's it this generation. RDNA 2.0, what they're calling RDNA 2X, 2X the performance, is not built to fight Turing. It's built to fight Ampere. And if it brings the same efficiency improvement and scales up to around 300 watts, like it sounds like it will, yeah, that sounds like it will at least challenge Ampere's 3080 that we already are starting to hear about, and possibly even the 3080 Ti. So it's not like AMD is just launching late again. They just chose to compete in the mid-range last gen. In next gen, they're not even talking about Turing. This is the Ampere competitor. And it will come out before the end of the year, around when Ampere does. Which brings me to my next point. The leaks we're seeing right now about Ampere do indeed seem very impressive. But these types of leaks are kind of similar to leaks we were getting about RDNA 2.0 mid last year. In other words, I'm saying, I do think that NVIDIA is better at controlling leaks than AMD, but I do not take this as meaning Ampere's right around the corner. Don't get me wrong, I think there's a decent chance NVIDIA may launch a token Titan for three grand or something to steal the limelight, but I just don't think the big Ampere rollout's coming till late this year at all. It just doesn't seem like it. The leaks we're getting suggest that this is a late 2020 release anyways. So the point is this. AMD is going to launch RDNA 2.0 this year, guys. Calm down. And it's not targeted at Turing. It's targeting at Ampere. Not saying it'll be better than Ampere, but honestly, the numbers I'm seeing from both companies seem impressive. I think both of them will be competitive with each other. And based on the market share AMD's taken from NVIDIA multiple quarters recently, I don't think NVIDIA is going to hold back. I think they're going to go all out with powerful cards that are better that are perceived to be better value than at least what Turing was. And the fact of the matter is AMD made commitments to Sony and Microsoft ahead of time. They need to make sure they both get their big launches they need. And making sure they get their big launches they need is incredibly valuable to AMD to make sure developers really are programming all of their games for the consoles for RDNA 2X, 2X performance, so that things look their best when it actually launches on desktop. That's what's going on. And again, let's not forget, the extended roadmap AMD showed off really is impressive, guys. RDNA 2X, I think we're getting double the performance of the 5700 XT and a reasonable power consumption package this year. And if you look at the roadmap before the end of 2022, we'll get something at least three times better than the 5700 XT, something 50% better than what we're already getting this year. Their graphics roadmap is not slowing down. AMD talked about how they like the fight, they're in it, and they are committed to multi-generational improvements. And I do believe they're ready to start bringing that out both in graphics and in processors. And not just in gaming graphics, but now they're working on a new type of data center architecture. 
And then there's Zen 4. Again, all of this is very impressive, guys. At the end of the day, this was a press conference for investors, not for gamers. And I know us enthusiasts get ourselves hyped up that they're just going to basically turn this into an E3 press conference. But that's like almost never happened. We weren't the target market. The target market was people who own their stocks. And if you do, I don't know. It looks like AMD is in the fight long term. And at least for us gamers, that's a, that is a good news. That tells you a, this isn't a blip. You know, that AMD isn't just going to sometimes be jumping in here and there. That they're really going to try to give it to Intel year over year for the foreseeable future. And that they are showing more interest than we've ever seen before, at least in the past few years, in taking it to NVIDIA. Not just this year, but with RDNA 3X in the next couple years. They're going to improve generation over in generation. And I just think that means competition is here to stay and it's only going to keep increasing. But unfortunately, we're not to the RDNA 2.0 launch yet, but I will cover it when more information comes out. I'll cover Ampere. I'll keep covering the consoles, which I think we're going to have a big console blowout within a few months. So, you know, subscribe to my channel if you like my analysis. Ring the bell button. Consider supporting me on Patreon. And don't forget to watch all of my videos that have come out over the last two weeks. I'm going to be working on another project for one of my other channels that I know a lot of you who are subscribers are interested in. I'm going to get that out this weekend. But... For those that just watched my PC analysis, don't forget that I've had a flurry of videos in the past two weeks. Before you go, where's his next video? Make sure you've watched all of those ones. And remember, there's always a broken silicon every Wednesday. All right, thank you. Have a great weekend. <laughs>